What's going on everyone? I'm going to try to help you visualize the repo market and it's a lot more complicated than many think. Even veteran uh, you know, experts in the market seem to underestimate the complexity of this instrument. Let's go ahead and take a look at visualizing the repo market. Uh, you know, the demand we see every day, upwards of $1.6 trillion, $1.5 trillion. So, this is the diagram of how it operates. Now, it looks confusing as hell, basically. The left-hand side, your flow of cash is going this way. Your flow of securities is going this way, generally, but that's not technically the case. So, what I'm going to do is visualize this. We're going to start with the center, and then we're going to work our way left and make our way back around to the right, and I'll try to explain it as best I can. Let's take a look. And by the way, bilateral settlement is without central clearing. Tri-party settlement is with central clearing. In the case of the Federal Reserve, they are the central counterparty. And in, in terms of the GCF repo, the central counterparty for that is going to be the FICC. We're going to leave out the GCF um, as it's a separate window, but I will include everything else. Let's go ahead and get started. So these are the list of securities dealers. Just for this example, we're going to go ahead and just use Citigroup as the example, but this is the list updated as of January of this year for securities dealers. So you can take pause and take a look, but it's all the big players that we see all over the place, right? Uh, Jefferies, HSBC, Goldman, Deutsche Bank, Credit Suisse, all the, all the fun friends. So if we start with entities we know, we're going to replace the diagram, and we're going to build on this diagram starting here. So securities dealer, we can put Citigroup. Citigroup, the securities dealer, lends securities to hedge funds like Citadel, and broker dealers like Jane Street with bilateral or no central clearings. So that's you know that's one aspect of it. Then we build on that. They also lend cash to hedge funds, broker dealers, and Morgan uh, mortgage REITs. So at the same time, they're lending cash to hedge funds, broker dealers, and mortgage REITs. They're also lending securities to hedge funds and broker dealers. Now. We build on it a little bit more. So this is what we just covered. We have the lending of securities to broker dealers and hedge funds and the lending of cash to hedge funds and broker dealers. Now we start to build on this side. So as far as where securities are coming from and being lent to, you have ETFs, insurance companies, ETFs like Fidelity, BlackRock, and Vanguard, insurance companies like we see in GME's 13Fs and AMC's 13F, the Alliance Insurance, Vanguard Insurance, Nationwide, all that shit. Mutual funds, and then pension funds. Those are your Texas state retirement funds, your uh, New York state pension fund, your Ontario Canada pension fund, all that shit. They are all lending securities to the agent lender, which is an example would be Fidelity, who then has a pile of cash collateral and non-cash collateral. So cash is going to hedge funds, mortgage REITs and broker dealers. Securities are going to hedge funds and broker dealers as well as agent lenders from all of these instruments here. And then the agent lender, Fidelity as an example, has cash collateral and non-cash collateral. Now, non-cash collateral is the only non-moving part in this entire diagram. So once we build on this further, get a little bit more organized there for you, the agent lender then lends securities to the securities dealer who then lends securities again to hedge funds and broker dealers. So you see how it just got connected through the agent lender fidelity in the example. Now, building on it further, the cash collateral actually gets reinvested in the repo market via insurance companies, money market funds, central banks, and bank portfolios such as Goldman and JP Morgan. Now, these four, not only is the cash reinvested from these four in the repo market, but the cash is also relent to securities dealers who then lend it to hedge funds who then the whole cycle starts over. So once we build on this further, and by the way, this is bilateral clearing between broker dealers and hedge funds, no central counterparty. Tri-party clearing does have a central counterparty, which we're adding in, next slide which happens to be the Federal Reserve Bank. So, as you can see here, the, once you insert the Fed reverse repo window acting as central clearing, they are the ones who are selling assets to the purple players here, and they're re they're, the cash that's from right here that's reinvested in the repo market, it's being used to park overnight 
they take the assets the assets get uh, basically churned by these money market funds held overnight for the repo as collateral so the assets are the non-cash collateral in essence so this is the full picture basically it's a big convoluted mess Securities dealers are lending securities, they're borrowing securities, they're lending cash, and they're borrowing cash all at the same time. The cash collateral is being reinvested into the insurance company's money market funds who are also lending securities to the agent lender who is lending securities to the securities dealer who is lending securities to the broker dealers and hedge funds who also are having cash lent to them by the securities dealers who have it lent by the money market funds, central banks, and bank portfolios who are literally using the assets from the Fed as non-cash collateral, and then the Fed is selling the assets to these four players here. It's a big mess. I don't know if that even helped, but hey, it was a shot. 